There is so much medical misinformation out there. How do you know what's the actual truth? Today we're going to go over the most common myths that patients believe about arthritis that are not true. Or are they? What is up everyone? It's Dr. Everyday Jan, PM&R physician. Let's start with the first one. All arthritis is the same. This is definitely not true. There are actually many different types of arthritis, such as osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, septic arthritis, juvenile idiopathic arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, and there's even more. The reason that the difference matters is number one, the cause is different, the workup is different, and the treatment can be completely different. So it's important to clarify when we're talking about arthritis, which arthritis we're talking about. For example, rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease where the body is attacking itself. It affects multiple organs throughout the entire body, including the skin, eyes, lungs, and heart, and even the blood. And it's treated with medications that are called DMARDs. In the initial and acute stages, the joints are severely inflamed, so you actually want to immobilize the joint and not exercise it too much. Otherwise, it can cause even more bone destruction. On the other hand, osteoarthritis is the most common and probably the one that you're most familiar with. It occurs with aging, obesity, trauma, and repetitive use. When there's a lot of mechanical stress and abnormal joint mechanics, that causes inflammation, which then causes cartilage destructions and it can extend the bone. And osteoarthritis only affects the joints, it doesn't affect other organs in the body. Typically, the treatment for osteoarthritis is physical therapy and strengthening and stretching exercises. In this video, we are going to be talking about osteoarthritis because it is so common and affects so many people. Number two, cracking your knuckles causes arthritis. Did you guys hear that? So this has actually been proven to not be true. There was a study that had 215 people and they looked at people who cracked their knuckles, aka knuckle crackers, and people who didn't crack their knuckles, and they found that there was no correlation between the knuckle cracking and any x-ray evidence of arthritis. The reason that you hear that knuckle cracking sound is because gas bubbles in the joint fluid, kind of similar to like when you blow up a balloon and you just keep blowing it and it pops. The only real harm with knuckle cracking is that if you really crack your knuckles excessively strong, you might damage some ligaments, but I mean, you've gotta be really, really strong. <laughs> Number three, copper braces are the treatment for arthritis pain. Now, a few years ago, there was this huge craze with copper braces. They have some great reviews on Amazon, and they say that the copper braces work because they improve blood circulation, reduce inflammation, and aid in recovery. But in reality, any brace that's causing compression does the same thing. And they have done studies to see whether wearing copper actually helped with osteoarthritis and even rheumatoid arthritis, and none of those studies have actually shown that there was any benefit. So while you may not be doing any real harm by wearing these copper braces, the only real harm is to your wallet. Number four, exercise makes osteoarthritis worse. You might think that this is true because most of the times with osteoarthritis, the pain is worse when you're moving and exercising. However, proper exercise actually improves osteoarthritis in the long run. With proper exercise, you are building the muscles around the joints that support the joint, which therefore puts less compressive forces on the joint. Also, exercise increases the range of motion, which helps with joint stiffness. Not exercising actually makes your arthritis worse. When you don't exercise, your muscles atrophy, and if you have muscle atrophy, you have less support on the joint. Also, not exercising leads to weight gain, which then puts more compressive forces onto the joint. There was a study that found that for every one pound of weight that you lose, you actually reduce the amount of force on your knee joint by three to six times. So that's huge. If exercising on the land is painful, you can try doing pool therapy or aquatic therapy because the water buoyancy helps reduce the amount of force onto your joint. Number five, You'll always have pain if you have arthritis. In the United States, over 80% of people over 65 years old have x-ray evidence of arthritis. However, only 60% of that subset actually have pain. But usually people don't get x-rays taken if they don't have any pain. So that just goes to show that having x-ray evidence of arthritis does not necessarily mean that you're going to have pain. Some patients are relatively unaffected by arthritis and have no symptoms versus others have very severe disabilities. I've had a lot of patients who have pain from osteoarthritis and have gone through treatment and their symptoms actually improve. Once you have evidence of osteoarthritis on the x-rays, that itself doesn't improve, but your symptoms can. Number six, 
Osteoarthritis is genetic. I've actually heard this a lot. Patients say that their mom or their dad or grandma has osteoarthritis, so they have osteoarthritis because they inherited it from them. However, so far there's been no single gene to show that there's a hereditary predisposition to having osteoarthritis. Most likely there's multiple gene interactions and the cause for osteoarthritis is multifactorial. Most of it has to do with age, obesity, your joint anatomy, and any repetitive stress. Number seven, glucosamine and chondroitin are the cure for arthritis. Now glucosamine and chondroitin are very popular supplements. However, it's been really controversial in terms of whether or not it actually helps with arthritis because the studies have been very limited and the findings have been inconsistent. There have been studies showing that it can decrease stiffness and also help with pain, but again, larger and better studies need to be done. Also, there haven't been any studies showing that it can cure arthritis or even reverse or stop the progression of arthritis. The American College of Rheumatology in 2019 actually recommends against the use of glucosamine and chondroitin in hip and knee arthritis because of the concern that the studies done on them were biased and also they weren't shown to be better than placebo. Now that being said, taking glucosamine and chondroitin has not been shown to have any severe side effects. So if you take them, it's unlikely that it's gonna cause you harm, except for your wallet. And compared to some other over-the-counter medications, such as Advil, glucosamine and chondroitin are probably safer. So what do I say when patients ask me if they should be taking glucosamine and chondroitin? Since there is no known significant adverse effects, I think it's still worth trying. If it helps you, then great. If you stop it and the pain comes back, then you know that it probably was helping you. But if you try it and it doesn't work, then don't waste your money. Number eight, steroid injections are the treatment for arthritis. Steroid injections are useful for the occasional flare up from osteoarthritis. It can help with reducing pain in the short term. However, there's controversy over repeated injections over a long period of time because it has been shown that doing so can degenerate the cartilage and cause faster progression of osteoarthritis than it would otherwise. So in the long run, it's possible that you may be doing more harm than good. There are actually a lot of other injections now that are used for knee osteoarthritis, such as hyaluronic acid, PRP, and sometimes even stem cell injections. However, they do tend to be more expensive. Number nine, cold makes my arthritis worse. I've heard this so many times from patients saying that their joints can predict the weather, and usually they're right. However, from research studies, there hasn't actually been a cause and effect link directly to cold weather. It may be related to the barometric pressure, putting more pressure onto the joints. And there was a study done that patients with chronic pain in the colder climates did not report more pain than patients with chronic pain in warmer climates. Cold itself is not necessarily a bad thing for osteoarthritis. If you have a flare up of pain in the initial stages, cold is actually recommended to help reduce inflammation. After the initial stages, usually 24 to 48 hours, Heat is beneficial to help increase the blood flow and also increase your range of motion. Number 10, all joint pain is arthritis. There are so many different causes for pain in your knee, your hip, your shoulders, your neck, your back. And while osteoarthritis is very common, it is not always the cause for your pain. For example, with the shoulder, not only can it be arthritis, it can be frozen shoulder, rotator cuff impingement, rotator cuff tendinopathy, biceps tendinopathy, referral pain from the neck, and much more. So before assuming it's just osteoarthritis, it's best to see a medical professional who can evaluate you and determine what the actual cause is. All right, I hope that video helped clear up some of the myths that you may have believed about arthritis. Let me know in the comments down below what else you have heard about osteoarthritis. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and if there's any topic that you want me to cover, Leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to make a video about it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.